listen, I, I can't thank you guys enough for all coming out tonight to witness something that is incredibly historic. And I actually found out that there's even more history that's coming tonight with our induction ceremony and a very special man that's been sent here from the president's office. That's right. We have representatives from the White House in the building tonight. <laughs> Round of applause. Right now, um, our executive director, as everyone knows, Master G, they brought hip hop to the world commercially. But before the Sugar Hill Gang, there was a group that was rock stars in the streets, in the parks, in the schools, in the clubs. Can you guess what their name was? This is the Cold Crush Brothers. To me, and to many people in hip hop, the Cold Crush Brothers are the very first major rock stars, major rap stars, major, you know, just blowout group that really did stuff nobody else did. And as a result, they paved the way for even groups like today, like Wu-Tang Clan. Wouldn't exist without the Cold Crush Brothers. And for all those reasons, the chairman of our board at the National Hip Hop Museum is the leader of that group and gonna introduce the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace, the one and only Grandmaster Kaz, everybody. Thank you for that small smattering of applause. <laughs> Oh, okay, dynamite, got you. Understood, understood. Um, I'm here because I want to welcome to the stage uh, one of the most influential, not rappers, MCs in the history of this culture that we call hip hop. And I was talking to somebody earlier and I, and I, and I sincerely gave him this sentiment. I said that I have learned more about black history and black culture from listening to this MC than I learned through all my years in school, okay? And the vehicle that is used to move our culture forward, our youth forward, and our generation forward is called hip hop and the man behind the edutainment aspect of hip hop is none other than KRS1. Make some noise up in this bit. Let me tell y'all a story. KRS1 is here. He has delivered the, the, the holy grail as far as uh, declarations or hip hop documents. This is the legendary Declaration of Peace. Okay, and um, we, we first signed this declaration. All these signatures that you see on here was from, uh, give me the year again. 2001, we were at City Hall. At City Hall. And I was looking at uh, the photo uh, the large photo that we took after the ceremony, and a few of the people that were in that photo are no longer with us. So this makes this more, even more important. Um, the fact that it is here at the National Hip Hop Museum, make some motherfucking noise for that. Okay, and it is being bestowed upon um, two people that weren't at the official or the first signing of the declaration and they, are, they were sorely missed at the event. It is only right that they add their signatures to this declaration. So before I say who it is, let me bring up the teacher, KRS-One, y'all. You know what, we're not going to take too much time on this. Uh, I'll give you a brief history uh, on this, this document <clears throat> here. This is called the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace. I can't wait to get on. Now, where the mic at? Uh, where the, is this actually Word? I got this one. This is probably what I'm going to use, right? Probably. 
It is good, though. No, nah, this is a, a celebratory moment, so it's not a lot of talk, you know. Uh, time to get that mic going. But here's the thing. is, is uh, Here's a little history on, on this, just so you know. So go back to the Stop the Violence movement. 1989, <clears throat> we put out a song called Self-Destruction. It was around that time that we realized that hip hop was culture, that it was more than music. Although we appreciated the arts, breaking them, seeing graffiti art, DJing, beatboxing, we saw ourselves evolving into a specific kind of dialect. We were speaking words that the United States didn't even understand the meanings of. It's hip hop that came out with words like fresh and chill and chill out and dope. And these kinds of words created a new reality for us. I'll spare you the metaphysics, but words create reality. The more words you know, the more things you can see. And so we realized that these little terms like DJing and breaking and MCing, and these little terms were creating whole realities though. It wasn't just the art form, there was an intelligence going into this. So we said, you know what? We united around the Stop the Violence movement, and we said, wait a minute, we could actually do this. But now we started actually having meetings and conferences and summits, and some of you have been to these summits. Some of you have produced some for yourselves, of, of yourselves. This was 30 years of this. We went from, say, 89 to, uh, say, say, 2009, really, uh, when the Gospel of Hip Hop was, was, was published. But come back to this. So when we realized that we were a culture and not just a music genre, we had to prove that culture to the rest of the world. I was just saying in the back that entertainment history does not have to rely on facts. Entertainment history, you can say you anything and people just go with it because it's entertainment. Facts and evidence and all that doesn't matter in an entertainment history, it's entertainment. But when you start talking about culture and really building legacy, heritage, tradition, these things that make up culture, when you start to, you need the facts. Now the facts of the matter are not facts like we know this happened and we know that happened. No, those are not the facts we're talking about. Hip hop is so new that we have to agree. Let me say the word again. We have to agree on what the facts are. This is the trick. This is it. We haven't done this yet. Hip hop needs a conference of its own where we finally sit down and write hip hop's actual history. This has not been done yet because we don't have consensus. Everybody over here, this went over there. I just came from Houston, Texas. What a place that is. Great. Scarface, I'm hearing Scarface in my ear. And others, uh, um, uh, Manny Fresh was there too. They're telling me the whole history of Houston hip hop. Like, you could just forget the Bronx, forget New York. There's like a whole deal with Houston that, that when the story's told, you see how it affected you here in New York. Or in the Bronx, I, I'm still in New York in the Bronx, here in Washington, but in New York, you say hip hop starts in New York. No, it doesn't just start in New York. When you get down to the scholarship and the culture, you see breaking coming out of Los Angeles, popping and all that out of Fresno, California. When you look at our elements, you see them coming from all over, you know, cornbread with the graffiti writing. He's out of Philly, okay? So when you start doing the scholarship, you start seeing your people come together. Now, this is the first part. I'm going to spare you this part, th this part. That's the cultural piece. We got to agree. We got to come to some kind of an agreement as to what our culture is and how we're going to conduct ourselves in it. Now, the other side. So just because you think you a culture doesn't make you one. You need other governments scientific organizations, churches, or religious organizations to also recognize you as the culture you say you are. So in 2001, we went to the, well, we went to the Riverside Church uh, there in Harlem. 
got a sanction from them, meaning that we wanted in writing certain organizations to say in writing that they recognize hip hop as culture. And we needed it in writing. So everybody didn't want to put down that in writing and put their, their corporation or their institution behind that. Many universities didn't want to support us on that. I'm not going to name any names here publicly, but they're the Ivy League schools that are claiming that they have hip hop courses today. They didn't want to support this. So at the end of the day, the ones that did support were the ones that we actually needed. Started with UNESCO. Shout out to UNESCO forever. UNESCO is the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. These are the people that determine what culture is, at least from an academic point of view. Smithsonian tries to take credit as well. But in our case, we had UNESCO on our side, and UNESCO is the one that first said hip hop is culture. So right from the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, hip hop was recognized. We said we need that in writing. We got it. New York City Hall had to recognize. We need that in writing. We got it. The United States Senate had to recognize. We need that in writing. We got it. At the end of the day, and let me also say this, this dude behind me right here, Cass, the whole time, everything that I'm saying to you right now, the whole time, Kaz is right there showing up. We have film on you, Kaz. Kaz is talking, advocating. I got Kaz all in California, it's City Hall. We talking, trying to explain to government officials that hip hop is not just a music genre. You can live in this. And so, you Kaz, thanks to you, okay, that's why this document is here. And, and there's, a, there's another woman Another woman. <laughs> that another woman. There's a woman here uh, by the name of Roxanne Chante. She's another one that this document, when we called and said, yo, we need, who is in the, who is the census? Who's in the consensus? Who agrees with these principles? And the people you see down here, when you come up closer, you can see, we signed in pen, some signed in Sharpie marker and so on. The document is here. I don't know, Jeremy, how you want to do it, uh, but the document, is, it, we're delivering the Hip Hop Declaration of Peace to the National Hip Hop Museum. And let me, let me show you, <clears throat> as Master G cr comes closer to the document, and what, what an honor. Uh, before I get there, before I get there, G, I'll say this at, at, at the end uh, of this. These paragraphs here were taken by, uh, well, if you want to know the names, I'll give you the names privately. I don't say the names publicly. But everybody you know wrote this. Yes, when you see the names, you say, oh, and yeah, and uh-huh. And we put 32 of these down. Sorry, the document I have is 32. This, this, but this is the original. This is what was at the United Nations. In 2001, we put this forward, and then we argued it for about two years after that. The argument on this crunched it down to 18 principles, still the same principles, but rewritten, crunched down. We got attorneys on it, people from the United Nations, so on. Nothing was changed, just crunched down into 18. And so those 18 principles are being delivered along with this original document to the National Hip Hop Museum, and here's why. Here's why. Last point. The temple of hip hop doesn't collect material objects. Some of you uh, might recall that well, you might recall me saying rap is something we do, hip hop is something we live. In this instance, the temple of hip hop is interested in the living of hip hop, the lifestyle of it, the sacredness of the culture itself. We're located at 55 Ludlow Street in Newark, New Jersey. If you ever want to stop by, go right to Brick City right there, past Redman, and you right there at the temple. 
Uh, and so you could just go there. We're building it out right now, and I'm not going to get into that long here. But just so if, if you want deeper information, deeper knowledge, there's a whole history with this as well. You could always take classes at the Temple of Hip Hop. Now, this here, this document, the reason we're delivering it here is because we don't collect material objects. The, the temple of hip hop, like I said, is all about hip hop as a collective consciousness. Hip hop never enters the material world. Just think about that for a minute. Think about what we got here. Hip hop is psychic. It never entered the material world. You can't go to it, you can't eat it, you can't wear it. It's nowhere here. We are thinking this. Hip hop is a shared idea. It's, it's how we behave with each other. There's no title to that. There's no time or space on that. This thing just exists, and we all feel it, and we know it. So the Temple of Hip Hop documents the history of the feeling. That's the tradition, the heritage, the legacy. What do we tell our children 100 years from now, 50 years from now? How do you preserve hip hop even that long? That's the work of the temple. But the National Hip Hop Museum, they're collecting hip hop's material culture. This is why we are in total support of what's going on here. Because we would like to get more. Like for instance, okay, I'll give you a controversial story before we end. So one of our icons, and you'll know, <coughs> excuse me, I'll say this, Several of our icons. Start with Cool Herc. Cool DJ Herc, recognized father of hip-hop culture. So one day, Cool Herc gets it in his head to sell his equipment and everything. He auctioned it off at Christie's. I called Cindy when I heard. And I said, Cindy, you can't do this. This is crazy. How is Herc going to auction off his stuff? Well, there was other issues and complications and this kind of stuff and more personal than anything. So I left it alone. <clears throat> Cindy, you know, she understood what it was, but there was more personal things going on. So I went away heartbroken. And I said, man, some dude in some foreign country going to buy her stuff and we never going to see it again. And for me as, as, as a historian, I'm looking at this like, damn, I really wish I could have, you know, Lo and behold, the auction goes up, and I'm sitting there, and I couldn't even get on the auction. They wanted all types of information, money up front, <clears throat> all types of money up front. And all. I was like, no, nah, I couldn't even do that. But the National Hip Hop Museum did. Uh-huh. When hip hop was at its vulnerable state, the National Hip Hop Museum stepped up and collected most of the stuff. Swiss Beats, of course, got another collection. But it was this institution that stepped up. Stepped up and said, no, we're going to make sure. Say, now, when I heard that some of her stuff was with the National Hip Hop Museum, there was a sigh of relief. The sigh of relief. As long as it's in our hands. And look at it. Our. Our hands. We good. The culture keeps moving forward. That was a major move on your, you guys' part. Major move there. Last but not least, the 50th anniversary of hip hop. <laughs> the 50th talk anniversary of hip hop. No, I'm not going to talk about it, guys. <laughs> what I'm going to do, though, is shout my man right here, Master G, because let me tell you this. Let me tell you this, there's a certain honor, there's a certain honor that's bestowed on people that you can rely upon. You can't rely on too many people these days. People got stuff to do, people that's fronting, this, that, and the other. But when we really needed to send a message to the people of the Bronx and to the world, the message was hip-hop is not for sale. Hip-hop is not for sale. And on the weekend of our sacred birthday, we wanted to put something forward for the people of the Bronx. This in front of 1520. 
So I said, yo, who can come through on the strength? Just come through. It's 15, 20. We're going to have people out there, kids out there. Nobody can afford a ticket. So we're going to die. Don't start. Shah, don't even start. Can we get this off? And there was a few people that were called, one of which is behind me now. But I want to shout Master G because I know Kaz. And me and Kaz go back, and I, Kaz is Kaz. <laughs> okay, that's Kaz. Okay. But I never met G. We passing in the, we did shows. It's, yo, what up? We passing, rolling back. I called G up. I said, yo, we doing this. I, before I finish the sentence, you're like, yo, I'm there. I'm there. What's up? I'm, I'm like, yo, G, let me at least try to explain. Yo, I'm there. I'm, yo, I'm there. And what it was was that, come on, these dudes, this is Master G. Sugar Hill Gang costs money. Don't get it twisted. Sugar Hill showed right up. When they threw Rapper's Delight on in front of 1520 Sedgwick, the sky opened up, okay? But my respect went straight this way. And when I found out you was also the executive director of this museum, I come as a servant straight up. Straight up. And I want us to document this, <clears throat> that KRS-One, the Temple of Hip Hop, we are in complete support of this museum, complete support of this museum. We want to see this prosper. We want to see this expand. Too many other people are claiming Hip Hop Museum, and Kaz doesn't know them. Flash, never seen them. Melly Mel, nothing. The money going every other place, except to the hike to the icons that made the culture. You know we're concerned about that, right? We're concerned about that. Well, here is where we could remedy the situation. Here's where we could remedy the situation. I'm here also because Jeremy. This dude right here. This dude right here. This dude right here. No, let me show you him real quick. Let me show you Jeremy real quick. Okay, let me show you Jeremy real quick. Because, because when people call us for things, especially like this, you know the credibility got to be there. This is, this is the culmination of about a five-year conversation. About a five-year conversation. I don't join organizations. I don't really endorse them like that. I'm not really down. The reason why is because I can't trust them. I'm serious about this culture. I can't go with people who are not. And you can see also... You know, so many heads said this, 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 and this. <clears throat> but now the 23rd, you know, we're here now. And when you ask for support, the, the actual support is not there. The money is not there. The interview is not there. The show up is not there. So I'll end and say this, the fourth ending. I'll end and say this. <laughs> That this document exemplifies, and us in this room as well, exemplifies hip-hop's unity. Hip-hop's unity. Hip-hop institutions should not be competing with each other. We should be cooperating with each other. So let this document, let this document be a symbol of at least two hip-hop institutions cooperating with one another. To see hip-hop benefit. That's the end of me, KRS-One. Thank you. Yeah.